this man, you go and meet him and enroll to be baptized. Is that okay? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Also, on the 11th, next week, Saturday, we have the business and the car and career seminar coming up. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Yeah. Now, it is, a, it is very important for you to attend these classes. We are going to be opening a lot of things up in this one. Number one, we are going to be having a presentation on how to start a business. How to start a business. Then we are going to have a presentation on bookkeeping, accounting, finances, which is basic because many people have business ideas, business proposals, they don't know how to manage money. They don't even know what to do. So we will have that one. Of course, we are going to have another uh, big one on uh, careers. Like just a little bit more, we can, uh, we can squeeze from our sister, Maureen. Then we're also going to have a presentation on project management. It is very, very important. It's good for us to know how to go about all these things. That you're a Christian doesn't exclude you from knowledge. So on the 11th, this will be happening uh, on Saturday the 11th in here in the sanctuary. So the Lord bless you. Put those this in mind. And the Lord bless you as you attend those things in Jesus' precious name. Next week, 5th of May, after the service, we have the parent-teacher meeting, like uh, the catch-up thing we do after the service. It will be here immediately after the service, just the same thing you go for in school, for you to know what is going on, how they are doing, just for parent, teachers, and the system. I probably will be there to, to brainstorm to make it better. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, we are going to go into the word of the Lord, and I'm going to be ministering on the message titled, Fulfilling Prophecy. Glory be to Jesus. Our prophetic guide this month is from Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 25 and 26. I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land. And they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. I will cause showers to come down in their seasons. And there shall be showers of blessing. I'm going to be ministering on the message title, Fulfilling Prophecy. Now, let me start by saying what is a prophecy? What is a prophecy? Because if you don't know what a prophecy is, you likely won't know what to do to activate or actualize it in your life. And because of uh, all the things we see in the world today, uh, there are prophets all over the places, people merchandising the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the gospel of Jesus, all kinds of things. And it's good for us to know what a prophecy is so that we know how to treat it and make the most out of it. First, know this, that every word of scripture is a prophecy because it's God's word. When treated rightly, when approached the right way, when it aligns with Bible faith, then it brings a performance in our lives. So our prophetic guide, for example, is a prophecy. Too many of us is one other thing that we do. So the only way that makes it a reality in your life or turns to something in your life, a testimony, is when you receive it as it is. That's a prophecy. So what is a prophecy? A prophecy is the revealing of a divine agenda or God's agenda or foretelling of God's plan or God's program revealed by the Spirit of God. Also, a prophecy is a divine insight into God's order of event in people's life when there is an insight. So because you're wrong with the prophecy, you know what to do, there is, is being foretold. Or a prophecy is a divine 
navigate us, what to follow, path to follow in the race of life. Psalms 119 and verse 105. The Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So when the prophecy of the word goes forth, it, it brings light. You know what to do. You know which step to take. Your word is a lamp to my feet and light to my path. It's also good for us to know that every God ordained, every true prophecy spoken by faith is ordained for fulfillment. Every true prophecy. I said earlier on there are people merchandising the anointing of the Holy Ghost all over the places. So I know that. I know that one exists. So I want you to know that from the beginning. But every true prophecy spoken with the integrity of God's word is ordained to come to pass. Because God doesn't speak idle statement. God doesn't speak under pressure. He's never been under any pressure to say nothing. So all the words that he says, he meant it. Either through the scriptures or by impression into your spirit. So if you hear him audibly or if he's spoken by a prophet, he says what he means. God means everything that he says. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God manifests his power in his word. So when he speaks, he wants to manifest his power. So how we see it, how we treat it, determines what manifests. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Now, a man can speak and they change their mind. Somebody can even speak and deny it. That happens every time. Like I said, I didn't say it. Sometimes, maybe they have brain hemorrhage or... or but it says, my word will not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. That is the purpose of me sending it. It shall prosper in the things of which I sent it. So every prophetic word is ordained for fulfillment. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 27 says, For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will have known it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? So nothing stops the prophecy from coming to pass. Nothing. Nothing. This one I want to show us by the help of the Holy Ghost, my path and your path in fulfilling prophecies in our lives. Because I know many things have been spoken concerning many of us, and we are wondering when will it happen, when will it happen. Number one, when it comes from the Lord, either from scriptures, or from a prophet, valid, honest, God's side of it is eternally secured. So, lack of fulfillment is lack of us accepting our own responsibility in it. For the Lord of hosts has purposed, who will have knowledge? Who will have knowledge? So, I know this may generate a lot of questions in our heart because. We are all waiting for fulfillment of one thing or the other, and waiting and will be wondering. So the purpose of this message is to show us what we need to do. And the answer is very simple. Your faith in the prophecy, your faith in God, because the prophecy you don't believe is not empowered for fulfillment. It's not approved for fulfillment. Your faith in the prophecy. That is why you don't throw yourself everywhere when it comes to who speaks into your life. And that is where Christians, uh, many people out of frustrations, out of many nonsense, they begin to shop for prophecy, prophesy, see something, and all over the places. Some year, many, many years back when Atlanta, Georgia, and we had a TV program, I just finished ministry on TV, and I met this lady for, for the first time. 
And I had an associate pastor, his name is Robert, and uh, he was with me, and uh, he knew this lady, and he said, this lady is an evangelist, they say. And she, he, he was introduced this, this lady to me for the first time. And na the lady's name, let, let me not mention it. So, and uh, we greeted. How are you doing? So I was talking to some other people on the TV. Before I look back, I saw my pastor that followed me nailed down, and this lady started prophesying over her. And at the end of it all, <laughs> it was a drama, honestly speaking. I saw <laughs> I saw her lifted on her leg like this. <laughs> so, out of surprise and embarrassment, I went to see her. I went there, I saw her butt. Then the lady looked at me and did like this. I said, stop. Stop that nonsense. You don't see a lot of them here, you go to the East Coast. <laughs> You see all kinds of nonsense. I said, oh, please, stop that nonsense. Stop it. She looked at me. So Robert was looking at me. I said, both of you need that. <laughs> yes, I said, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I cast out every familiar spirit. I said, you, both of you come and see me. Bring her to come and see me. Eventually, she joined our church. She became my assistant. So many things, how they many things how there. It's a long story. So when prophecy is spoken with God's integrity, God backs it up. Bible says, who is it that said it and it comes to pass? If God has not commanded it, I have never said anything. I am not under any pressure to speak. I don't carry the title of a prophet. But a man or a woman of God, you become a prophet when you operate speaking God's voice over his people. And I know too well that when you start lying about what God said, God said, God said, that's the last time you hear from the Lord. But when God says it, he honors it. If God asks me to speak, it's not my responsibility to bring it to pass. <laughs> me, I'm a microphone. I am a microphone. If he says in my ears, I say it over his people, it's his I don't worry about it. It's his own responsibility to see the fulfillment. Who is he who said it and it comes to pass? When the Lord has not commanded it. If you prophesy falsely, <laughs> you will die under pressure. Because you will have to figure out how to bring it to pass. So when it is spoken by faith in God and inspiration of the Holy Ghost, you must have faith in the prophecy, you must have faith in the Lord, you must have faith in the vessel that the Lord used. That's what empowers the fulfillment of the prophecy. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her of the Lord. Blessed is she who believe. Blessed is she, is she who believe. There will be a fulfillment because she believed. So you must believe the prophecy. You must trust, honor, believe the prophet. You must believe God himself. Then you expect the fulfillment of the prophecy in your life. Now, let's say to this, God is the God of prophecy. Because he's always speaking. He's a speaking God. Now, everything we see in our world today came to be by speaking, by his voice. God created the world by the word of his mouth. Everything came into existence. What we see now and what is still evolving, what we haven't seen, what is yet to come, was created by the word of God's mouth. We found out from Genesis God said, God saw. God said, God saw. God said, and we are all seeing it. So God is a God of prophecy. Genesis 1 and 31, and then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. So in the evening and the morning were the sixth day now. 
Everything that he had made by prophecy, by speaking, God said, God said. So when God was speaking, he was creating, he was making. So the voice of God, the voice of prophecy is to create something in your life. So your faith in the prophecy, your faith in the prophet, your faith in God, and how do you know that you have faith? You never forget. I can tell you one or two people in this church that never forget our prophetic guide. And I put Pastor Christine number one in that class. That's how you know somebody that receives the word of God as a prophecy. So prophecy is a divine mandate. So when you receive it, you never forget. When you never forget, you run with it. When you run with it, you develop faith in it. No matter what you see, nothing can shake it off you. Then it is empowered for fulfillment. Shortly before I left Nigeria in 1999, I went to Papa and I spoke to him. I said, son, I am traveling. Then he looked at me. He said, all that it takes for you to succeed and prosper has been deposited on you. Go. You will not fail. If you fail, don't come back. If I don't see you, I will know you have failed. He said, but you won't fail. That word is like a weight on my head. Since 1999. Because I knew it was a word of my prophet. That word, I've been carrying it like hand luggage all over the places. How you receive it, how you treat it, the word of God has been of no effect in people's life for carelessness or lack of faith or how it should be handled. Now, when God speaks to you, then devil speaks to you after. Now you started dwelling on what devil says. How does the devil speak? Now, God spoke to you about your life. Then devil tells you, see your life. You won't amount to anything. <laughs> then you forget everything God says. Lack of faith, lack of understanding. Of, uh, it's not for you to say, devil shut up, you came too late. Devil spoke, God spoke yesterday. So God is not the reason why prophecy are not fulfilled in our lives. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you. Multiply, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He spoke, he prophesied over Abraham. For men indeed swear by the greater, an oath for confirmation is for them and hand of us. So all of God's word is swore as an oath on them to bring them to pass. I have seen more testimonies through the spoken word in the life of people than anything else. Now, what are the channels of blessing? Channels of blessing number one, the Holy Scriptures. Every word of scripture is a prophecy. Every word of scripture is a prophecy. All of the word of the Lord is a prophecy. Prophecy, proven prophecy that has been tested. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Search from the book of the Lord and read not one of these shall, and read not one of these shall fail. No one shall lack a maid, for my mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. Such from the book. So the Bible is not a book of Bible stories. It's not to familiarize you with the journey of the Israelites out of Egypt. It's a prophecy. It says, search from the book of the law. When you have challenges, when you have needs, when you want God to speak to you, you need direction. Find from find Bible and begin to read something. You'll be shocked what God will say to you out of it. Search from the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail, nor one shall lack her maid. For my mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. So the Bible is God's word in print. The Bible is God's word in print. 
and is a proven and tested prophecy. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. So when you receive the word of prophecy and turn you to a star inside of you, then it shines outward. So that is why anything you will become, you first become on the inside by revelation. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. The O.K. James call it, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. New King James says, the prophetic word confirmed. King, old King James say, sure, more, more sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 and 19 says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So, the first channel, the most reliable, most dependable, proven and tested channel of prophecy is the Holy Scripture. Is the Holy Scripture. If you can dare to believe what is there, if you can dare to do what it says to do, it can fail. Number two vessel Human vessels. In First King chapter nineteen and verse fifteen, human vessels. God speaks through people. God put people in the office of a prophet. God manifests Himself in the prophetic in the lives of the people. There are people that God calls as prophet. That is the truth. I know the pro proliferation of it and all kinds of things that we see as what are done on the office of a prophet. But it's a ministry office. And God manifests the prophetic. You don't have to carry the title of a prophet. First Kings chapter 19 and verse 15. Then the word of the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. God was talking to Elijah. And when you arrive, anoint Azil as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as, the, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Hebel Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. You are going to transfer the mantle of the prophet on Elisha. Elisha was not there. But now say, it shall be that whoever escaped the sword of Azil, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the word of Jehu, Elisha will kill. When it comes to power in the realms of the spirit and in the natural, it hands in the spiritual. So human vessels, Prophets are God's agent of change, God's voice on earth, God's voice in people's life. Prophets are God's voice in the lives of the people. Knowing how it works, having an understanding of prophecy and the ministry of the prophetic would help us to know how to receive. A prophet can be speaking into your life without closing their eyes and say, thus say, hey, the Lord. But you receive it as a prophet. My last meeting with Papa in December as I was coming back to the U.S., when I went to see him, he kept emphasizing one word. He kept emphasizing one thing. He kept emphasizing one statement. He said it, we'll go back, talk, 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 come back to it. Come back to it. When I came back, I scattered a planned schedule for March for it. I received it. 
as a word of a prophet. And that was the reason why I have ministered in every service since December. Except for when we have one of our mothers two weeks ago. I took it as a voice of a prophet. He didn't say, Thus say, Head the Lord. He didn't close his eyes. He was just talking like an instruction. So if he says all of these things, we had planned, scheduled to have a conference with a guest minister of a, rep, of a big name the second week of March. To cancel it wasn't easy. The problem is still there. It's still hanging on my head till today. But I had a word from my prophet. He didn't know I had planned nothing. He didn't know I had scheduled nothing. But he kept speaking in that area. I came back. I said, this meeting is not hold the elder anymore. It took me almost a month to know how to confront the person to say I'm canceling. And I said, I'm ready to give the entire honorarium like you came. The entire package of honorarium, like you came. But that meeting won't hold. We have, many Christians have taken divine instruction carelessly. Carelessly. May I humbly tell you something this morning? I may not close my eyes. I may not say, "Thus say, hey, the Lord." Please pay little, little attention to what this young man is saying. We had a bad incident that happened years ago in Stockton. Some of you will remember. I was driving to church, and the Holy Ghost placed this young man in my spirit. I got to try. I said, hey, may call this boy. They called him, put him on the line. I said, I would like to pray with you. I want to see you. He said, I can pray now. I said, no. I need to lay hands on you. He said, what is my schedule? Because it's divine instruction. It was a Friday. I said, you can be coming right now. You can come tomorrow, Saturday. He said, okay, sir. I will call you back. He didn't call me back. Friday, I didn't see him. Saturday, I didn't see him. Sunday, I didn't see him. Monday, I called again. I said, you haven't seen me. I need to see you. He apologized. He said, I will see you during the week. The next call I had was he had died. The following Sunday. The following Sunday, I saw his dead body. When service the following Sunday, when I had a call, I left service early that day, ran there. My God, there was today. It was his dead body I saw. It may not be something that will lead to death. What if it's something that will alter the trajectory of your life to success? So I believe we need understanding of how to handle. The word of the Lord. Isaiah 42 and verse 22 say, But this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes, and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey, and no one delivers. For plunder, and no one says restore. Prophets are rescue agents. Glory be to God. There is somebody here this morning. You are at the point of lifting up of your head in your family. In that family, you are the one that was, that should succeed. And all hell has broken loose against you. Somebody said this morning, somebody said this morning, you know there is a lot of resistance that can come up, have come and place some kind of restriction on your destiny. But it's a people rob and plunder. All of them are snake in holes. They are hidden in spiritual prison houses. They are for prayer, no one delivers. For plunder, because no one says to restore. 
I decree in the precious name of Jesus that individual, you are free forever. Yeah. Whatever makes you a target to family enemies, in the name of Jesus, the same will turn you to a star. Yeah. I understand there are professional prophets, people, uh, people of God, people merchandise and prophesy. Be careful who lay hands on you. They will complicate your issues. They will complicate it. Be careful. Be careful who you, where you put your hands. Be careful who lay your hands. We were in Oakland some years back in, in, in MacArthur. And I had a friend then, he's a bishop, I forgot his name. And he came with this person and he introduced him as a prophet to me. And I was sitting, they were standing as he entered my office. At the moment I said, meet prophet so. He closed his eyes, he did like this. <laughs> I stood up, I said, stop. The bishop was there, I said, stop. Please don't prophesy here. Stop. We are about to go into the service. And they follow me inside the service. It was in service. So I now, I now began to tell him that you need the word of God in your life. You need the word. Number one, the word of God does not contradict itself. You already break, broke protocols. So that tells me God is not there. And I find out it was, in the end of the day, he asked me if I could employ him. I said, you need to go, you need to, go to the subject class. That's how they begin. Everybody begin from somewhere. You start there. After some time, if I think you are serious, I'll put you in the department, head of department, gradually. So there are professional pastors. They will prophesy because they need money. They need money. <laughs> Some years ago, somebody was collecting money to go and be fasting on behalf of people. <laughs> you see how dumb human beings are. <laughs> Did you follow him to the mountain? The one that will fast for you will never ask for money. So yeah, somebody can fast for you, but those will never ask for money. Now, how do you measure? Okay, how do you measure the value of a fast in monetary terms? Is it? Do you charge by hour or per day? <laughs> or per the distance or the mountain? Oh, per prayer point, the Lord bless you. Most likely per prayer point. <laughs> Jeremiah 23 and verse 21 says, I have not sent this prophet, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. It's your responsibility to, that's why you must be filled with the Holy Ghost to know who speaks over your life, who you are allowed to lay hands on you, Otherwise, they will complicate you. There are people that are prophesying that can't tell this is how God called them and where he called them. You have heard in my mouth, if you are not tired, how God called me several times. You come and tell me if the story has changed. I've been saying it. I can tell you every face. Don't forget I was an unwilling agent. <laughs> The one that brought prophet to my office wanted to prophesy. Shortly after that, we went somewhere in Oakland. <laughs> Be careful who prophesy over your hand. Yeah. We went to their house. They said the man has been on drug for the past three days on the street. Police is looking for him. They said, I wish him. I said, we always him. They said, we better leave this area <laughs> if, we, if he catches us. <laughs> Me and Pastor Esther, we ran away. <laughs> we ran from there. 
He was prophesying in the office. He was, then shortly after that, you know the lesson we had? It was in Satarita jail. But gladly. Be filled with the Holy Ghost to discern. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Who hear me, O Judah, are you inhabitant of Jerusalem? Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, his own, and you shall prosper. You don't train somebody to become a prophet. There are school of prophets in America. You pay, you subscribe. <laughs> Several school of prophets. What qualifies it? A road, pay. Fill the form. School of prophets. All over this nation. You don't train somebody to become a prophet. You only train after a calling. God spoke to Elijah. Then when he saw Elisha, he threw the mantle on him. Then he began to train him. You don't train. You don't promote somebody into the office of a prophet. And you don't reward somebody into the office of a prophet. And people like titles. You see people changing titles? Titles have no spiritual entitlement. It has no, no entitlement. So some people after they are tired of pastor, they change it to prophet. Some people will say senior pastor, lead pastor, executive pastor, chief pastor, chief bishop, the CEO. <laughs> Glory be to God's name. So what are the steps? We have done the channel. What are now the steps? What is my responsibility? That's where we're going. We serve a God of prophecy. Don't forget the Bible is a bank of prophecies. God cannot lie. It's impossible for him to, to, to lie. So whether this, the prophecy is of scriptures or by a human vessel, the fulfillment is guaranteed when your faith aligns with scriptures. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to her liberally and without reproach, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith who, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man unstable in all his ways. Faith, faith, Faith. The property you don't have faith in is not empowered for fulfillment. You cannot be unstable. It's spiritually costly. You cannot go back and forth. You can't believe today and doubt tomorrow. You can't doubt today and believe tomorrow and change and say you are feeling somehow. Your feelings will be an enemy and hindrance to the fulfillment of God's plan in your life. You don't deal with it. Look at what the Bible says. For let not that man suppose that I will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his way. You can't be strong in faith today and tomorrow everybody is encouraging you. You can't shout Jesus is Lord in church and during the week, everybody say it is where, it is where. There is hope. For let no other man suppose that will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So you need faith to be spiritually stable. I told you what Papa said to me in 1999. Maybe if I have time to tell you what, 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 what I've gone through. 
oppositions, confrontation, challenges. But that word will never leave me. Faith. So you know why Satan uses doubt as a weapon to disqualify you from receiving your prophecy. So you say, oh, it's the way I feel. I was just down today temporarily. Satan is making you to be unstable, to be double-minded. Oh, I saw something that when it got to me, I just lost it. I didn't even know I got into that mood again. God forgive me. I have faith now. Faith comet. <laughs> you cannot experience any manifestations without faith. Faith is the master key of manifestations. Matthew 21 and verse 21. So Jesus has said to them, I said to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. And whatever things you ask, when you pray, you ask in prayer, believing you receive, believing you will receive. So, when it comes to God, when it comes to the Bible, you believe first, then you receive. But the natural, it says, sin is believing. But in God, believing is receiving. Natural knowledge says, you only believe what you see. But Bible faith says, you believe it because God says it for you to see it. So if you operate the natural sin is believing faith, you will never see anything manifest. You will never see anything. Please, let our eyes of the spirit be open. Open the eyes of your spirit. Open it and see. Now, how do you know? If you see a future, a great future, there is one that can make you depressed today. Bible said Jesus Christ for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. It wasn't funny, it wasn't interesting, but it was on a, a roll. He knew what was ahead. It, you cannot be depressed until you don't see a good future. You cannot be down unless you see nothing. Mark chapter. 11 verse 24, therefore I said to you, whatever things you ask, so when you pray, believe that you receive them, and then you will have them. You must first believe before you experience it. You must believe and act on it. So, for example, if you have medical challenges, and prayer is prayed on you by faith, now if you are waiting not to feel any pain before you agree that you are healed, you will stay there for a long time. You receive your healing by faith, so all those things that that situation have hindered you from doing, you begin to do it in faith. If you are waiting to be a faithful giver when you are rich, you may not get there. Everything is by faith. It's by faith. It's by faith. It's by faith. You believe it. You do it. You see it. You experience it. In Habakkuk chapter 2, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So talking about vision, talking about prophecy, he ended up, he said, the just shall live by faith. So the prophecy is spoken for, now you need faith. So, verse 4 underscores the fact that every prophetic word is anchored by your faith. There is no skill, there is no technology, there is no psychology to bring prophecy to pass. God's prophetic agenda is only delivered by faith. Rise to your feet. Habakkuk chapter 2, I want to prophesy. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. It will not lie. 
That is what God is saying concerning someone this morning. For your vision is for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it surely come, it will not tarry. In the precious name of Jesus, every spoken word concerning your life will come to pass in Jesus' name. Whatever has been written and said about you, in the name of Jesus, it will come to pass. Amen. The vision of God's plan and purpose for your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to believe from this moment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. The vision is for an appointed time. The works of the devil cannot change and overturn the voice of God. He can't make it useless. He can't make it irrelevant. I decree in the name of Jesus, all that has been said concerning you will come to pass. In the spirit of prophecy, I scatter every spiritual obstacle to the fulfillment of your purpose in life. For the vision is set for an appointed time. By the end, it will speak. It will not lie. The moment you begin to get into depression, sadness, and unhappiness, Satan has stolen the prophecy. But now I decree full restoration in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up those hands. In the name of Jesus, that individual that is going through, that has become a focus of family attack because no one has really lifted their head in your family and they now suspected that this one wants to rise. In the name of Jesus, I decree your first full rising. Yeah. Devil could not stop Jesus. In the name of Jesus, no devil will stop you from shining. Yeah. No matter how many destiny has been destroyed in that family, in the name of Jesus, I decree this morning minus you. Amen. The forces that has brought many down in your family will not succeed in breaking you down. Amen. I decree you are the Joseph of your family. Amen. I decree you are the Joseph of your family. Amen. Your star will shine in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your star will rise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every natural and spiritual obstacle of the enemy to bring you down, it will not come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and has no sorrow, no sickness, no infirmity will stop you from shining. Amen. We have a more sure word of prophecy. We have a more sure word of prophecy. As many as are believing God for the fruit of the womb this morning, in the name of Jesus, let me say, Sarah herself receives strength to conceive. In the name of Jesus, be imparted with strength to conceive in Jesus. I decree after this service, Many marital destiny will begin to find fulfillment. And every business under the weight of the power of darkness, in the name of Jesus, the weights are broken. The next time the devil comes your way to want to bring you down, tell the devil it is too late. God already spoke. Tell the devil it is too late. You are not going to bring me down. You are not going to get me mad. You are not going to make me sad. You are not going to cause depression into my life. It is too late. God already spoken. He already said it. He said there shall be showers of blessings. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Whose report will you believe? How 
can you believe the report of the devil over God's report? I'm not saying Satan won't speak. You tell him it is too late. You tell him it's too late. God already spoken. Glory be to the name of the Lord. <laughs> I said last week, I said visions, God's plans, a spiritual pregnancy. You are pregnant of your business, pregnant of your home, pregnant of husband and wife, pregnant of your babies, pregnant of fortune financially. You will deliver in the name of Jesus. Everything that the Lord has said concerning you. There is somebody here, you have a vision for your home business, but you are in employment right now. I decree the delivery of that business. In the same atmosphere of God's power, I relocate out of your path every workplace enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up those hands and just worship the name of the Lord. Lift up those hands and worship the name of the Lord. Lift up those hands and worship the name of the Lord. Lift up those hands and worship the name of the Lord. Let me ask you, I need all the children department in the front right now. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to prophesy over your life. Begin to prophesy. Echo the prophecy of God in your life. I will deliver my baby in the name of Jesus. I will bring God's plan in my life to pass in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. The devil is a liar. Open your mouth and pray. Oh my God. Somebody, open your mouth. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Open your mouth. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Whether the devil likes it or not, it shall come to pass. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. You will deliver your babies. Lift up your voice. Huh? Lift up your voice. Huh? Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. I need to pray every month for all the children. They know that all of them should run. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. All the children begin to come to the front. All the children begin to come to the front. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Open your mouth. 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 Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Open your mouth. Lift up your voice. Open your mouth. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Begin to bring back prophecy in your life. Come on, step forward. Step forward. No, no, no. Stay there. Stay there. Then move forward. Step down. The children 18 and under, 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 18 and under. The Lord laid in my heart every month we do this. Please step back. Let me take this boy down. 18 and under, 18 and under, 18 and under, 18 and under, 18 and under. Come forward. The Lord laid in my heart every month we are going to begin to do this. 18 and under, run, 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 run. 18 and under, everywhere. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Press, stretch forth your hands. And begin to, begin to prophesy over this baby. 
they will fulfill their destiny in the name of Jesus. Our born and unborn children in the name of Jesus shall fulfill their destiny. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. 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 Begin to prophesy over their lives. 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 Open your mouth. 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 Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy over their lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, stretch forth your hands towards spirit. Friends, stretch your hands towards them. First of all, I decree total healing Amen. from every developmental disorder. Amen. I cast out the spirit of autism Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any bad defect, any growth delay, any kind of disorder in the life of born and, and unborn children, in the name of Jesus, I decree you are totally made whole. I decree your healing forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the hand of God, you are made whole this morning. Amen. Now I commit all these children into the hand of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, you will not fall where other children are falling. Amen. You will not go down where other children are going down. Amen. I decree God's favor Amen. will attend to your life at every step. Amen. In your study, you'll be a star. Amen. In any vocation, you'll be a star. Amen. What frustrated your parents will not frustrate Amen. you. Amen. Obstacles your parents face, you will not face. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. I cover you all by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I cover you all by the blood of Jesus. No weapon form against you will prosper. Amen. The plan of the devil concerning you will not come to pass. In your academics, your star will shine. In your career, your star will shine. In the precious name of Jesus, the joy that you brought to your parent, that joy shall be everlasting. I rebuke the hand of the devil over your head, Amen. over your mind, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. None of you will be a victim of the mind. Amen. Please take this thing away from this boy. Take it away, shut it off. And let it not happen again. None of you will be a victim of your mind. Amen. You are delivered from every mental or mind imprisonment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every plague going around the schools in the mind, they will say they need a therapist. They will say they need to talk to somebody. In the name of Jesus, the mind of Christ is your mind in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sound mind is your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will grow in God's wisdom. Amen. You will grow in good stature. Amen. You will grow in God's wisdom. Amen. You will grow in good stature. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus, none of you will be the victim of sexual malfunctioning in our society. Amen. Gay and lesbianism will not be traced to your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. God made you man and woman, boys I guess. That is what you will remain in your life forever. 
in the precious name of Jesus. Go in peace in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, go to your seat. Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. 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 Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Please go home with this word. Satan's trap is to make you to have unstable faith. He knows you can't receive anything from the Lord. You have to say that person is unstable in all their ways. Let not that, let not that person suppose you will receive. Don't assume you will receive. You can't be down today and be up tomorrow. Anytime Satan brings something that can bring you down, Satan, you came too late. He said too late, you are not going to get me anymore. Too late. In the name of Jesus. Too late in the name of Jesus. You are going home. You are going home. You are going home. You are going home. Glory be to God. What is that song that Pastor Esther took today earlier on? Where is she? Can somebody, can anybody take that song quickly? Moving back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, oh everybody say forward. Oh, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in Things I made new Surrender my life to Christ I'm moving, moving forward Oh, I'm moving, I'm moving forward Oh, say you make all things You make all things new Yes, you jobs. Receive your breakthrough job. 
In the name of Jesus, I commission angels to make provisions and arrange and take your resume for approval everywhere in the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. 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 Jesus. Glory be to God. Everything that the Lord has said concerning you will come to pass. From now, it will begin to come to pass. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Come on, lift up those hands and just worship God ahead of time. Thank him for your testimonies. Give him praise ahead of time. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Lord, we worship your majesty. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I can't wait for your testimony. I cannot wait for your testimony. Whether the devil likes it or not, it will come to pass. It is not up to him. He's not the final answer. God has the final answer. God has said it. It has come to pass. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. As you take your seat. It is time for us to worship God with our whole friends. Your tithe and all your covenant giving responsibility. Your tithe is all your incomes divided by 10. God himself understands mathematics. It is time to worship God with our tithe and our offering, all our giving sacrifices. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every limitation, every family limitation is broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Those that think nobody will rise in that family, in the precious name of Jesus, in their eyes, when they are alive, they will see you rising. Hallelujah. So let's give our offering and tithe. You can give by Zell. You can give, take an envelope in the seat pocket in front of you and package your offerings and tithe. You can send by cash sharp, dollar sign, DLCC 2252, or test give to 927 925-275-1600. Package them. If you are sending them electronic, go ahead. If you are packaging with offering, with envelopes, leave those envelopes up and begin to worship the name of the Lord so that the ushers can see envelopes in your hand. If you have offerings in your hand, wave them onto Jesus. Usher looks your front, your back, left and right, and go ahead and receive the offering. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Let's go ahead and worship the name of the Lord. <laughs> 